Okay, here's something that's been on my mind for a while. Something that's kind of been burning in the back of my brain. And that something is, please play OG2 Ford with me, please. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. All right, I want to show you guys something cool real quick. This is IOQ3F, IO Quake 3 Fortress. This is basically Team Fortresses to like cooler older brother. Uh, this is one of the progenitors of you know Team Fortress 2 as we know it. Now, I like to play this game because I like to play one very specific map. So we're going to create a game here. Okay, and now you have your map list right down here. So we're going to scroll down to forts. Now, anyone who's played any kind of Team Fortress based game before, you know, will recognize this map pretty much immediately. Yes, this is what we all know as two fort. See right here in IOQ3F, you can still pick all of your, all the same classes that you're used to. Okay, so instead of spy, they call it agent. Instead of scout, they call it recon. Uh, but you still have a sniper, you have a soldier. Uh, but I always play as engineer. engineer. All right, so there we go. I'm going to go through this door here. Here we go out here to the balcony. Most people recognize this with a cover going over the bridge. But you know, otherwise, everything as you know it is still here. Yeah, see, you guys know it looking like this. Yeah, you see, you may recognize it looking a little more like this. You know, with the cover going over the bridge. And there's even a classic style retro version of this map for TF2 specifically. Yeah, where the graphics are a little more stripped down, textures are a little more basic. And again, you get out here, you get out here to the battlement and no bridge or no cover over the bridge. You see, you get out here to the battlements and just like the original, no cover on the bridge. But I have to say, this one kind of looks a little bit better, not gonna lie. And again, what deeply fascinates me with this is the ability to play on this original engine. So let me walk through you how you can set this all up yourself, because this thing is truly, in every sense of the word, multi-platform. We can get this up and running on Windows, Mac, Linux. You can even do this on a Raspberry Pi. I know it, I've done it. I will do a walkthrough for that specific version if the need ever calls for it. But yes, it can be done and it's all here. So here we go. Everything's laid out exactly the same. But yeah, we're going to run up these steps here. We're gonna go out this door. Here's the drop down in front of this. We go across the bridge or we can go underwater. Swim back down here, down through the tunnel and come back up for air. And there's a stairway exactly where you expect it to be. You run up the stairwell. And I know in some versions of modded two forts, you, know, you can you have to return the flag back down to your flag. But in this one, no, you bring it back up here to the battlements. You, know, you still have to get across here and drop it off. And there you go. Captured the flag. Now, this is the version of the game that I want to play with you all. So I will show you how to set it all up. First thing we are going to do is go over here to the IOQuake 3 org website you are going to download ioquake 3. See, again this is multi-platform there's versions for windows there's versions for mac os with instructions there is a build for linux as well but we will focus on the windows install since that's probably going to be the most common so once you run the installer for that for my demonstration purposes we're going to install it on the d drive under a folder named video games and we're just going to call it quake 3. Okay, now you need the Quake 3 Fortress mod. So that will get you these files as well. Moddb.com. Right. Yeah, moddb.com. And you search for Q3F, Quake 3 Fortress. And then you go over here. 
here it's files and right down here here's your download so you're going to extract that to the directory as well now you do need an actual version of quake 3. see both on gog and on steam it's running for about 15 dollars currently not a huge investment however if you were to look somewhere in some archive of some sort and search for it there you could probably find it in an archive on the internet that you can get to with the google search all right so i know what you may be thinking but robot i know a little bit about some of these quake 3 mods and engines yeah wasn't wolfenstein enemy territory basically a super high quake 3 mod and basically, yes, it does run a similar engine, so that's why uh, this thing exists, the uh, ET Legacy. It's basically, it is to Wolfenstein enemy territory, what IO Quake is to Quake 3 Arena. So, yeah, you can get this Force engine. You, there is an ETF exclusive mod that you would get from... Um, you know like mod database so yes there is a way to take the etf mod dump it into etf legacy and basically get the exact same level loaded up uh, and playable and yeah this is what it looks like here so yeah sure shit here it is yeah this is it loaded up in etf okay it's all the same hallway turn right come here to the lobby you go up the stairs there's the battlements up here no cover on the bridge and down here here's the flag so yeah it's all here Except we're not here to talk about this one. We're going to continue to focus on IOQuake instead. So you have your Q30F mod from ModDB here. You have IOQuake installed. Uh, you have your copy of Quake that you've obtained through a totally reasonable means, you know, or otherwise. Yeah, and now the only thing you need from that Quake 3 package that you have you know your full legit copy of quake 3 from kid software is these two files uh, pack 0.kk3 and pack 1.kk3 okay i'm pretty sure the rest of these actually come with io quake you know, or there is like a legit means to get the rest of these but for our purposes they're really not necessary uh, pack 0, pack 1 are the only ones we are going to focus on. So yes, you, you would put them in this base Q3 directory here. Now um, when yeah, you got when you installed IO Quake. So here's your IO Quake executables. Here's the, and then just make sure pack 0 and pack 1 are in there. Now the Q3F mod that you downloaded. Okay, here's where it goes. Here's what all of these files look like here. Here, I'll give you an even better look. Yes, see? Here's what these files should look like. Right there. That's what mine looks like live right now. And it should look something like this on your end too. Just saying. Okay, so now, if you have everything working and you launch that IO quake uh, executable for the first time, you're probably going to get something that looks like this. And you know what? This is totally fine. You just go down here, accept, boom, right there. Now, you should have this thing right here. It says mods. Boom, right there. Oh, hey, there's Q3F. All right, let's click that. Let's load that. And now you should have something that looks like this. And it sounds like that. All right, now your graphic settings may not look exactly like this, but we'll go over that in just a second. But as long as you can now get a screen that looks just like this, that's pretty much everything you need right there. So you know what? That's awesome. So now the exact next thing that we're going to do is quit. Alright, and now we need to talk about editing config files. Alright, do not freak out. Please do not immediately quit the video. I can get you through this. We're going to be okay. I promise. Alright, 
here's what we're going to do. All right, let's talk about the config file. So you have a notepad open, right? And here is the file that you need to edit. So if you start typing this out, you know, this C colon slash user slash and your profile here, the part that I have blued out and the part that I have marked down here in the text, you know, as just your profile, you need to know what this exact thing is. And then you type in that, you see the neat thing about it is if you do it up here with the big red circle, you know, where I have it blued out here, if you start typing this out, it will allow you to fill in the rest or it'll try to automatically fill in the rest. But then you need to go to this app data folder, the roaming folder, the quake 3 folder, and then there will be a Q3F folder. Inside the Q3F folder is Q3Config. You go ahead and open that with Windows Notepad. So once Notepad is open, hit Control F on the keyboard, and then a Find window will come up. Inside the Find window, you will put Find What? Swap. SWAP and there you go it will find swap for you so the figure that you are looking for is this SATA R swap interval when you find it that number that is you see as one here will probably be a zero you can delete the zero and put the one in here okay now if we just go a few lines straight down from here uh, we will go and we see here this custom pixel height that I have marked with the 720 and custom width at 1280. Uh, yes, this is 1280 by 720 resolution, basically 720p. Uh, because now we've done the frame sync by setting that swap interval to 1. So that's vsync on at 720p. You knew exactly 60 frames per second. If you want to, yes, you can do 1920 by 1080 if you have something bigger than a 1080p screen that you're hooked up to. I like 720 because this is also going to launch windowed and then within the game, you can set things to full screen and then it'll just automatically apply on its own. So we want it to be like this every time it launches. So that way we set full screen on our own. Otherwise, it's just going to be a cute little 720p window on top of the desktop yeah, and its own little window. The next thing that we can change from here that uh, will need adjusting. All right, so if you have swap interval still highlighted and you go up. The next thing that you can find that immediately needs to be adjusted is where it says SATA name right here. This Lico Suxors is basically set by IOQuake by default. But from here, you can change it. Now this up carrot one and up carrot two that you see right here, that is actually putting color on this text. And you can do a search for Quake color chart or text color chart and it'll look, you know, but I believe this is green and red or red and green one of the ways or i know there's a green and there's a red i'm just not sure which order it is but either way you can just delete all of this and put your name in here so like i'm not going to bother with the colors right now i will look up the colors later i will give you a short video that will get, break down the color chart for you i will find that later but right now i just want to set my name to robot Okay, so now that we've done the swap interval, we've set the resolution and changed our name, you know, you go to file and you save. Okay, but now let's discuss actually launching the game. So right here in your IOQuake directory, you notice here I have this extra file called IOQ3F.bat. Okay, so if I were to right click and edit that, I would bring it up in notepad and basically what that notepad file is going to look like is this right here. Here is the text that you need in order to make sure that you can launch the game and that Q3F mod will actually work. So IO Quake here, now that's going to refer directly to the this executable file here. 
See, I have one that is named IOQuake3.exe. So uh, you need to make sure that this exe name you know, matches up with the very first command in your bat file. Okay, so IOQuake3.setFS underscore game Q3F2. Okay, so I think you know, I named it this specifically uh, Q3F2 uh, because you know, of, I just had Fortress 2 on, on my brain. Because uh, basically, again, like this is Quake 3, Team Fortress 2. And now this next command is very important as well. This plus set space com underscore hunk megs with this capital M. I'm pretty sure that's actually important. And 256 what this is saying is that this game gets 256 megabytes of ram to run in you know a quarter of a gig you know to run the whole damn game but this is set higher uh to run quake 3 fortress then you would need to run quake 3 arena i'm pretty sure quake 3 arena does everything it needs to do in either 32 or 64 um, megabytes so yeah, you do need to beef up the game engine considerably to get it to fit uh, Quake 3 Fortress properly. But again, that's what this is number setting. If you wanted to, you could also set this for 512, effectively doubling this. I honestly do not know if that actually makes a damn difference at all. Uh, I wouldn't leave it just like this. But yeah, this is the command that needs to run in order to make sure that we can run Quake 3 Fortress. So you make sure you save that with the .bat file extension. Very important. Very important that when you are saving the file, you know, this make sure it's safe as type down here where it says all files here in this picture. Make sure it is set just like that. The file name has to have that .bat extension. It cannot have .txt. So that way, when you are saving the game here in this folder with the with the executable, yeah, it looks just like this. Very important. Okay, so now that we have that saved and everything is uh, set like that, you will now have this IOQ3 bat file. You know, in your directory, it may you may not be able to see the dot bat depending on how your Windows settings are configured. Uh, but it, the little icon should look like a gearbox. It should not have a notepad in it. If this new file that you created has a notepad icon, it is still a text file. You need to change the file extension to dot bat b a t. But if you have this dot bat file, you can now do just double click this. And now, Quake will launch, and it'll launch right into this. And as I showed you earlier, you just accept, you go to mods, here's the Q3F, load that, and then it should immediately switch into the other game. And just like so. Okay, now, until a server is set up or if you're setting up multiplayer with somebody else you know which i will go into more detail in a later video i, uh, I just want to make sure you can get to this point you can practice on your own if you go to create a game here here's your map list down here if and when i set up my own q3f server the only level it will be playing is forts so I'm just going to have that on a 24-7 loop. So that way, if people are, are live and playing, if you get to a certain score, the highest score at the end of a set time, you do progress to the next round. Engineer. And here you go. Here is pretty much the only one you need to familiarize yourself with as far as I'm concerned. Sure, there will be other levels that you can test and play in there, but yeah, I pick my guy and make sure I can move around the map and that everything looks good. Yeah, I can fire off my guns a whole bunch of times, and, and then yeah, I can get to my menu when I need, where yeah, I can build my auto sentry and my supply station. But basically, what I'm saying is make sure you can move around the map and everything looks good. Once you can, talk to me. 
So once you've established that you can get around the map and everything looks good, then you hit me up and we will see about getting a server online. You know, I want to make sure that, you know, everybody has everything set that they need, you know, and it has everything working, you know, before uh, I set up, you know, matches, you know, or build a server. And that will basically be the next video in this playlist. I'm pretty sure the demands for something like this is so low that I can even have this running alongside the Minecraft server, you know, and without having to take anything down or putting an extra strain on either one. You know, right now the Minecraft server is not that busy, so there's still plenty of CPU resources left over to run this. Because as you saw, it only takes, you know, a quarter of a gigabyte to run, you know, for this server. Like, I would probably allocate a full gigabyte. Ooh. Alright, yeah, so we got plenty to spare. But either way, that'll be set for the next video. But here you go, just once you have this up and running, Hit me up on Twitter. You know, if we share any Discord servers, you know, DM me in Discord. Let me know, hey, I got this up and running. Or if we're that close and you need some help, I will definitely help you get this up and running. For every other viewer out there, you know, if I don't know you like that, hopefully I've pointed you the way to help you get it, this all set up on your own. Yeah, you know, or head up me up with questions in the comments below. And I just want to play this with somebody. So, like, I know it takes a little bit more work than most to get all this shit up and running. But trust me, I honestly think it'll be worth it if we can get a couple people in here playing at the same time. You know, everybody loves TF2, but apparently TF2 has become like, you know, uh, like a hazardous wasteland. So I can understand why there isn't a huge appeal to just jump into like random matches in TF2 live on stream. I know I got a couple homies that do it and like God bless them or maybe they have like specific community servers that they stick to, you know, so to make sure like nothing crazy happens. Cause like, you know, just jumping into rando shit right now, you know, it's kind of a uh, wild west. So I figured this would be something a little more bespoke, a little more boutique. Yeah, uh, and again, you can run this on a potato laptop and still play with people like and know that like you're going to be okay. Because again, later on, I want to show you how you basically you get this up and running on a Raspberry Pi and you could potentially still join a live server and play with people, you know, on like, you know, a $50 computer, you know, the size of a credit card. I mean, granted, you need a little bit more kit than that to get everything up and running, but I'm just saying. You have the flag. But there you go. IO Quake, you know, basically a far superior yet significantly older version of TF2 before TF2 was a thing. If you want to play along, let me know what you think. Yeah, hit me up, ask questions below, do what you got to do. Robot out.